I switched to Linux as my operating system for my private, uh, my private projects and for the majority of the computers I use, right? I have one Windows computer that works just fine and it does what it's supposed to. I describe that computer extensively in my computers, in my uh, videos on Intel Pentium, right? The Intel Pentium uh, processor. I have a set of videos about that particular uh, computer, right? But my other computers run Linux or some edition or flavor of Linux, right? Because Linux is not an operating system, right? It is the, um, it is the software that allows other people to create operating systems, right? And so there are what you call Linux-based operating systems. And so I switched to Linux-based operating systems in 2009 for my private computers. In my professional work, I use primarily Microsoft Windows and have used Microsoft Windows in my professional work, right, uh, since the late 1990s, right? Since the late 1990s, I've used Microsoft Windows and I've used Microsoft technologies since that time. So I have a very strong background and expertise in Microsoft Windows and Microsoft Windows software development technologies and server technologies, right? And so I know a lot of that extensively, including MS-DOS, right? Writing uh, programs in MS-DOS and navigating the computer in MS-DOS since the late 1980s, right? But I like Linux and what it represents, not just technologically, but philosophically. One of my favorite people is Richard Stallman. I agree with his general philosophical views. The, the high level summary, right, that Richard Stallman represents, I agree with 100% all of it, right? The, some of the nitty gritty details, you know. But anyway, um, and I love what Linus Torvalds has done with the Linux project, right? And the awards that he has won, they're well-deserved. I've been talking about or writing about Linux in some shape, form, or fashion since around 2011. And I've put projects out there, personal projects of mine, right? not affiliated with any uh, professional project that I've been involved with for any employer or any group. Um, I have put my own personal projects out there since around, I'd say, 2012, 2012. And fortunately, the, the Mayan prophecies did not come to claim my efforts in that regard. And so, I had the opportunity to work with the general public on computer technology as well as electronics in general. We're talking about smart TVs, routers, security systems, um, smart appliances, etc. Right? Video game systems, but primarily computers. And real quickly, I dealt with about 25 to let's say 40 people a week, an average of 125 people a week, which averages out to about roughly 500 people a month, and let's say uh, 7,000 people a year over a 10-year time period, We're looking at um, close to about 60,000 people. And if you talk about the uh, six to 8,000 people that I talked to over the phone during the 2020 uh, pandemic situation where you know I had to move out of the uh, public interaction space because of concerns during that time, right, for public safety and health, and but the mission had to go on, then, you know, if you add that group of people to the uh, approximately 60,000 uh, people that I've spoken to, we have a rough estimate of about 70,000 people that I've spoken to 
uh, then close to a 10 year time frame and right and so um, after um, approximating uh, over over five million dollars in sales right um, during that time period um, there's a a practical measurement of my um, ability to relate to technology and not only that but to understand technology in the public sphere and what I've seen is that people don't really care about Windows versus Mac versus uh, Chrome OS or anything like that and they really don't care about Samsung versus Apple when we're talking about phones and tablets yeah for, for in that moment when making a decision it seems like that and yes people through inertia and through things that they like they will like go in a certain direction if they've always done Apple they will always do Apple if they have always done Samsung they'll always do Samsung they like certain things that Samsung's done they like certain things that Apple has done yeah that looks like loyalty but I kid you not out of the 70,000 people that I've dealt with I kid you not if you show the case for technology A versus technology B versus technology C people will change their mind what that showed me is that people are not zealot they're not zealous they're not zealous they're not fanatical like those of us that have spent our time in the in the uh, in the high priest temple of technology can be or tend to be right yeah I mean you you've got these followings but they change they change and so and so I've seen it firsthand and I've been an instrument of that and I have been an instrument of that for the most part not on any zealous track though I've hit my moments but for the most part it's been about what was practical what serves that person in their situation that's what it really comes down to so it's like okay um, The year of the Linux desktop, is it ever going to come? I used to wonder about that. I used to be an advocate of that. But does it matter? In some ways it doesn't because every Android phone is a Linux kernel. It's a Linux-based operating system. Every Android phone is a Linux-based operating system. Every every uh, Android-based whatever is a Linux-based operating system and there's over a billion of those worldwide so there is a wide deployment of Linux based end user systems every Chromebook is a Linux based operating system until at such time that Google decides to switch to Fuchsia right as their OS as there are rumors to to occur first with the Nest line of products but we don't know if that's going to occur and then every Apple device is a Unix based it's a, which is a close cousin of Linux right they're not the same but the thing is is that Linux Unix dominates information technology you only see that small sliver of Windows on desktops and laptops right and a few uh, server deployments right when we when we count the numbers there's far more Linux out there in the form of all these servers that run Facebook Amazon Azure who am I missing Google yeah so when you look at those there's so much Linux out there your Wi-Fi routers your smart TVs there's so much Linux out there it is it is crazy right so one needn't worry about the future of Linux it's it's solid but there's always that wonder hey why don't you uh, use Linux as your desktop well this is what I'm gonna finally say on this topic we got different desktops in the Linux world you have KDE you have GNOME and you have cinnamon you also have 
XFCE, you got Unity, you got Budgie, you got all this other stuff. But I think the three primary desktop environments for Linux is KDE, GNOME, and Cinnamon. There's a YouTube channel called The Linux Expert where the uh, host of that channel recently went through their tier list of which were the worst, the good, the uh, okay, and the great desktops. And I found myself agreeing with, with that individual. And then I take that list of like 10 or so that they talked about as well as what they talked about on DistroTube, right? And I just thought about it, I reflect over it over these years, all these years that I've been using Linux. And I say, you know what? KDE, GNOME, and Cinnamon, those are really the desktop environments that's going to appeal to the broad, the, the, the widest number of people. And they're also the desktop environments that are the most stable and also the most, um, they keep track with the, the latest advancements. So when we're talking about going from X11 to Wayland or whatever comes after that, um, the different GUI libraries, the different uh, you know, graphical user interface conventions, the catering to the, the traditional window, Microsoft Windows crowd with a start menu and all of that. Cinnamon got that covered um, on one end where we're talking about a high performance, Windows oriented looking, traditional uh, looking desktop. Or if you want something that's more rich and fully featured and you got those snazzy animations and all these uh, settings and these kinds of things, KDE has that covered. Um, and then if you want something that's more like a Mac OS and that is great with touch screens and that is just super simple, GNOME has that covered and you got major, a major corporation behind GNOME, right, in the form of IBM. No, IBM doesn't directly do GNOME, but IBM did by Red Hat, which is the organization that is behind GNOME now, right? And so you got a multi-billion dollar uh, company behind GNOME, and GNOME has the most traction in terms of the number of software programs, um, has one of my favorite toolkits on it, GTK, right? And so between KDE, GNOME, and Cinnamon, you got the three desktops that are the best recommendations for a Linux-based environment on a desktop or laptop, right? And so the, the, the future for Linux looks very bright. And we've, we've seen situations now with Microsoft investing in Linux for the desktop through WS, WSL. Um, you have um, Linux is everywhere. So the mid uh, the, the mid 2000s and the 2010s where there was question about uh, Linux relative to everything else, um, that's a moot point now. That's a thing of the past and I will no longer refer to that. And so in my mind and in what I observe, uh, Linux is a done deal. And so now the question is, what are we going to do with Linux? What are we going to build? And how do we create coherent, holistic architectures, doesn't have to be one, right? But coherent, holistic architectures in a very Apple-like fashion, because I think that's a valid perspective that spans from back-end, middle-tier, front-end. Back-end, middle-tier, front-end. Coherent architecture all the way through Let's unify the humanities and the computer science, just like Steve Jobs. It's a great vision, and that is the way you're going to transform not only information technology, but the movements connected with information technology and do it in an open source way so all can have access to it, all can benefit, and you amplify innovation a million fold. I hope this was of use to you. Thank you.